Hello and welcome. The Japanese Prime Minister says that he intends to have frank talks with the South Korean president in Seoul. Fumio Kishida's trip to South Korea's Prime Minister is the first official visit by a Japanese leader in 12 years. This comes just two months after the leaders met in Tokyo. They are trying to repair relations strained by historical issues, mostly related to Japan's occupation of Korea from 1910 to 1945. The governments are cooperating on defence in the face of North Korea's nuclear threat and China's growing influence. Let's go to Rob McBride, who is live for us in Seoul. Rob, tell us about the prospects for the visit. What does it mean for improving relations? Yeah, it certainly does indicate the warming relations after years when we saw this souring of relations between Tokyo uh, and uh, and Seoul. You have to go back to 2011 when we had the last such summit visit by a Japanese prime minister here. Um, and it does follow a visit by Yoon suk yeol the uh, South Korean president, uh, as a guest of Kishida to Tokyo in mid-March when the two agreed to restart shuttle diplomacy. They will be talking uh, at their summit meeting most uh, significantly about security in, in the face of North Korean threats. Both leaders take a very tough line when it comes to this provocative missile testing by North Korea. But they'll also be talking about greater collaboration on high-tech industries, um, especially on strategically significant and sensitive components like semiconductors. And all of this has been helped by the re-establishing of preferential trading status, which had been withdrawn uh, in a tit-for-tat dispute arising from the uh, treatment of compensation for wartime forced labor. South Koreans forced to work in World War II Japanese factories that Yoon suk yeol now believes he has uh, resolved, uh, allowing for much closer ties with Japan. OK, thank you for that. Rob McBride uh, speaking to us there from Seoul. We can speak now to Benoit Hardy Chitran. He's an adjunct professor of political science and international affairs at Temple University, Japan. Joins us now from Tokyo. Really good of you to join us, sir. There is, of course, as we've been hearing, a lot of difficult history between these two countries. How determined are they really, the two sides, in improving relations? Oh, I think they are truly determined. It's been um, for a few years, actually, that both sides have been talking about uh, improving the relations. And on top of that, there's been the United States, uh, who is the most important ally of both countries that has been pushing uh, the two countries to mend these ties, because it makes it a lot easier for the United States to, um, you know, advance its interests in the region if its two regional allies are able to have or establish their relations on a more stable footing. So I would say one of the biggest changes was the election of Yoon suk yeol the uh, South Korean president. Unlike the previous South Korean president, he has been very keen to um, improve relations with, uh, with Japan. We've seen that with a visit of Yoon to Tokyo about two months ago in March. And uh, now with this visit by the prime minister um, Kishida to South Korea, um, the two sides really seem set to embark on a new journey towards more stability after 10 years of, frankly, quite uh, difficult relationships. Mm. You mentioned the U.S. Uh, clearly, this is in the interests of, the, of Washington's Indo-Pacific strategy. I mean, uh, how much pressure do you think has there been from the U.S. on these two countries to make sure uh, relations improve? Oh, quite a bit. And I think that pressure, uh, the United States has been quite open about, you know, trying to get its allies to get along and to improve their relations. Over the last 10 years, going back to uh, Pre uh, President Barack Obama, uh, same thing for President Donald Trump, um, the uh, high officials in Washington, D.C. were constantly talking about uh, their desire for better relations between Seoul and Tokyo. Uh, but the reality is, as much as uh, Washington is a key ally for these both countries, it, it has limited leeway when it comes to uh, what it can do in the bilateral relations between Seoul and Tokyo. So regardless of their efforts, None of this was going to be possible without the real uh, desire on both sides. On both sides. Now, in the case of Tokyo, uh, this desire has been there for a few years. But like I said, with this uh, change of administration in South Korea, finally we're kind of seeing a confluence of factors that uh, uh, that allow us to that allow this relationship to move to a new level.
It's interesting that domestically, the South Korean public don't appear to be happy about their PM strategy. It hasn't... His popularity has taken a huge hit at home. Is, is it similar in Japan? Um, no, it's. I would say it's quite different in Japan. Although in Japan, of course, there is a degree of uh, resentment, I would say, over the uh, South Korean uh, political attitude towards uh, Japan. And there is also a sense of kind of fatigue over these repeated requests by South Korea for greater apologies on the side of Japan. Um, overall, there's been more uh, a desire on the part of the Japanese public and the Japanese government to move on from this uh, difficult relationship. Uh, but indeed, as you mentioned, in South Korea, the domestic pressure has been quite an issue for years, in fact. Uh, the anti-Japanese sentiment in South Korea historically has been very high. Uh, many South Korean politicians, including South Korean presidents, in fact, have also uh, played on that anti-Japanese sentiment. Um, so this makes it harder for many uh, Korean leaders to reinforce, to reestablish and improve relations with South Korea, because very often they will face a blowback from the South South Korean uh, public if they try to go too fast in improving relations with Tokyo. Uh, and no doubt China will be watching all this very closely. I mean, how, how concerned will they be? Uh, well, for China, obviously, having um, allies of the United States uh, improving their relations, it's not something that is in its interest. Uh, for this reason, um, China, with successive South Korean administrations, it has tried to kind of woo South Korea away from the American orbit and closer within its sphere of influence. This has been easier with certain South Korean presidents. Now, with the current South Korean president, Yoon, he has been been somewhat critical of China. He has also um, expressed a desire for closer relations with the United States. So this is not welcome for China, obviously, because this kind of greater coordination between Japan, the United States, and South Korea uh, just makes it um, easier for the United States to advance its interests and harder for uh, China to do it for itself in the region. So no, this is not going to be a very welcome development, depending on the outcome, but this will not be a very welcome development for Beijing. OK, good of you to join us. Benoit hardy Chitran. Adjunct Professor of Political Science and International Affairs at Temple University in Japan. Thank you.